Hello, it's Andy Roberts here from Distributed Research and a little screencast tutorial about using FileZilla, the FTP client program, for modifying files on your website. So this particular FTP program, FileZilla, is an open source client and it runs on Windows, Mac OS and Linux. So that's great. Go to the FileZilla site, download the FileZilla client. In my case I'm going to download the Mac OS 10 version for my Intel powered Mac OS 10 Apple Mac and off it goes downloads that file. Don't bother with that stuff. Downloading FileZilla. There you go. Then I can unpack, install it. And here I am running. Whoops. Here it is. This is the FileZilla window upon launching the FileZilla program. So I'll explain a little bit about this window pane. These are the bits you need at first, host, username and password. That's where you need to enter the details that you get from your ISP when you have your web space set up. So I'm going to use one as an example. I've got a host here, it's called Ferry Time. One I don't really use very much, but uh, we'll have a look there. I've got a username. And I've got a password. And I've got a big button that says Quick Connect. That's the one I'm going to use. And here's the program going off, talking to the web server where my Ferry Time website is hosted. And it's successfully got in and listed a directory. So this is a two-pane FTP client. So the way it's set up, the one on the left is my computer, and the one on the right is the remote website. That's my website hosted in somewhere in Devon, perhaps. Doesn't matter where it is. Quite often it's in America if you've got Bluehost, Dreamhost, Hostgator. <coughs> They're cheaper sometimes slower. It all depends. So you've got something a bit like your um, Finder or um, Windows Explorer. Your program for looking at all the files that you've got on your hard disk that you've got on your computer and that's what I've got here. And I've managed to navigate. This is on, on my computer here. That's my user. I've managed to navigate to the desktop. So here's some files that I've got on my desktop. Just a few pictures, fairly tidy at the moment. And this is on the remote server. Depending on how that's set up, you might have to navigate down to a file called, to a directory, I mean, a folder called public HTML or www or slash var slash public. In this one, it looks like it's going to be main website HTML. So click on there, go in, and it's taken me to HTML directory. And I recognize this as being the top level of my website. It's got all my WordPress files in it. And I'm going to try and find an HTML file. Of course, there isn't an indexed HTML because this is all powered by WordPress. But there's a readme.html. That will do. Right, the package comes with a little readme file. It's .html, so it's something that's rendered in a browser. So what I need to do, I need to get that from the remote host, from the remote website, down onto my computer. And with Dreamweaver or something like that, there'd be an arrow that just goes down. Um, but do, 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 do. There's probably something in the menu, but I don't want to use it. So what I'm going to do is click, ah, 
click. I used control click, it might be left click, it might be right click. And it brings up a little menu which suggests download. Yes, these are operations I can do on the remote server. So I click download. Whoop. So it flicked there. So now on my desktop, according to this left hand pane, I've got a file called readme.html. And sure enough, on my desktop, I have indeed got a file called readme.html. That's been downloaded via FTP from my website. So I can now open that in a plain text editor like like um, text edit or notepad or something like that. And here it is in te um, text edit is my one. But notepad will do the same thing. So th we're now looking at the raw code, the actual character file as it's stored on the server. It's got a load of gobbledygook at the beginning, doc type, HTML, headers, all sorts of things that don't appear. There might be a whole load of style sheet stuff and everything like that, but a bit further down you will recognize the actual writing that appears on your website file. And you can then change it. You know, here's a bit that says we've eliminated user levels in order to see the da, 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 da. So you might want to just read more about roles and capabilities on the codex at and put in a a website address or something like that. So you're changing that bit of text. And if you know a bit of HTML code, then you could put in a href equals and make a clickable link so that when somebody clicks on that link, slash a, close the thing. Right, so you can make your adjustments to this code, save it, and then before you put it back up to the website, you can test it by opening your local file in a browser. There you are. This is uh, this is Firefox, and you can see here it's opened up the file users. This is a file on my desktop not from the internet but from my computer and it's got the change I made in it somewhere there so get rid of that test it decide it works now how am I going to get this readme.html back up onto the web server well we go back to FileZilla and remember we've got the local computer on the left and the remote website on the right so here on the local computer in a folder that represents my desktop is the file that I've changed and saved to my desktop. I now want to put that back up to the live website. So I'm going to try clicking on it again. Yes, I've got the sign, a menu which gives me the option to upload. So I click on upload and up it goes. I get a message saying the file already exists on the server. Are you sure you want to overwrite it? Yes, I do. I've tested it. I like my new version better than the old version. OK, I want to overwrite it. So now, live on the website, I've got the new version of the README. And you can test that by navigating to it from your browser to the actual www domain name, wherever your website is. And if it's not right, edit it again, upload it again, test it again, edit, upload, test, edit, upload, test. However, hope this has been useful. It's not the easiest FTP program I've ever seen, but it works. It will get you there. Another way of editing files on your website is to go to the control panel of the host that you're with and <coughs> use their file manager. That's usually got an option to navigate to the file you want and just click on edit and it will bring it up in a, an editor in the browser. That's another way of doing it, but that's not really what this tutorial is about. It's about FileZilla, the FTP code.
the program. So this has been Andy Roberts from Distributed Research. See you again next time. Bye-bye.